Well, staying with all this, because the level of anti-Semitism in Europe increased by 1,200 percent. That is according to the chairman of the European Jewish Association. The Israel-Hamas war has seen a huge rise in anti-Semitism, uh, like the synagogue that was attacked in Berlin that we're showing you pictures of now. Plus, in the UK alone, between the 1st and the 18th of October, the Metropolitan Police say they saw 218 anti-Semitic offences compared to 15 in the same period last year. Well, joining me now is Assistant Professor of Political Science at Webster Vienna Private University, Ralph Scholhammer. Good afternoon, Ralph. Thanks ever so much for talking to me. Um, the last two weeks, I mean, they have been indescribable on so many levels. Uh, what's your overview of it? I mean, this is very hard to say, but I think we have to look the facts straight into the face. Uh, what we are currently witnessing is the beginning of the end of Jewish life in Western Europe. I mean, this is a numbers game. Just to take Great Britain as an example, Britain has 400,000 Jews and 4 million Muslims. We have similar demographics in France and Germany. So in the future, to whose demands do you think policymakers will be more sensitive? So unless you want to risk a civil war-like scenario in your own cities, officially supporting Israel and your Jewish communities will come with an ever higher price tag that fewer and fewer politicians will be willing to pay. We already had terror attacks over the last couple of days in Belgium, in France, in the UK. There are security alerts in pretty much all Jewish institutions all over continental Europe. And even in the past, I mean, why do you think Europe has been paying Hamas all this money in the past? It has been a kind of a protection racket like the mafia did in the, in the past in Italy. We kept paying them in the, in the hope that they will not tell their supporters in our European cities to riot. And now this is coming to an end. OK, well, we can't absolutely uh, analyse and verify exactly what you just said there about Europe paying Hamas so much money. But did I hear you right that you said this is the beginning of the end of Jewish life in Europe? Was that, did you say that? In Western Europe. In yeah. Western Europe. I in, mean, in Western quite, Europe, absolutely. That's a quite staggering conclusion to draw now. Well, not really. I mean, we have polls, for example, out of France, where over 52% of Jews say that they want to leave the country. 70% say they don't think that Judaism has a future in France. And we have similar numbers out of other European countries. Jewish life in Europe has been attacked in, under attack over the last couple of decades. As I said, I know this is a painful topic and we don't like to speak about it. But we need to, to, to talk about these facts. It is very difficult in Western Europe to be Jewish. There has not been a single mass rally in support of either what we usually call Western values or of uh, the Jewish community. But they have massive rallies in support, some of them of Palestine, which I would argue is fine, but also in support of Hamas. We had chants in Germany, Jews, Jews, Jews into the gas. How do you want to live there in the future as part of the Jewish community? If the number, the, the, the community that holds these views over the last couple of years has been growing, we have more anti-Semitism today than we had 10, 15, 20 years ago. As I said, a painful topic, but we have to look the facts straight into the eye. You're based in Vienna. Uh, what, is it, what is it like there? Well, we had similar situations. I, in fact, live in the second district, which is the last Jewish district in Vienna. And on October 7th, we had people driving through the district with Palestinian flags out of their cars. We had some demonstrations uh, in public spaces in the, in the Vienna city center that actually were not allowed, but they took place nonetheless. And the police couldn't do anything about it. And again, none of these demonstrations was pro-Israel. None of these demonstrations was for the Jewish community. None of these demonstrations were pro, quote unquote, Western values. So we kind of see where the energy of the future is. And this is, you must always imagine, imagine you're a Jew in Vienna and you see that people who openly hate you, who openly chant that they want to get rid of you. And basically the public, the police, the political institutions are entirely helpless facing the threat. You will consider leaving. And the question is, where can they go in the future? I mean, you, you might have seen the pictures we're seeing today of the pro-Palestinian um, protests taking place in London today. Uh, people have the right to protest, do they not? Um, if they are pro-Palestine, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're anti-Jewish if they're pro-Palestine. They can be peaceful. Well, absolutely, they can be peaceful. But I think we have been playing this game now for 23 years. If somebody goes out and participates in a demonstration 
where people have, you know, little stickers that has the, the parachute on it that dropped into the concert in Israel where people were slaughtered. Uh, if people rip down signs of missing children that have been adapted by Hamas, if you participate in such a demonstration, I think it's very difficult to say, well, I'm just here for peaceful reasons. I don't really have any problem with Jews and the Israelites. I just happen to be in the vicinity of those people. I think this is a little bit, we delude ourselves. Uh, we have polls, just to give you one number, right? In Saudi Arabia, only 7% of the population would allow the visit of an Israeli prime minister. So anti-Semitism in the Arab world, in the Muslim world, is something that exists. Again, right? I know everybody says, how can you say this? We cannot say this. But we have been playing this game now for a very, very long time to pretend as if this is not here. Um, at some point, we have to accept. We say that normal Jewish life is possible. How? Look at France. Every single school, every Jewish school needs police protection. People are told in Germany, in Austria, don't wear the kippah, don't wear any kind of symbols that make you identifiable as a Jew. If you tell people that, you cannot tell me that this is part of normal life. You can in some areas, in the urban areas of Western Europe, Eastern Europe is different. In the urban areas of Western Europe, it's becoming harder and harder to live a normal Jewish life. And we know where the threat is coming from. The German interior minister has now admitted that in the past, they counted every anti-Semitic incident that was not openly from the left as being from the right. Now they finally, after 30 years, they will start to differentiate between right-wing, you know, neo-Nazi anti-Semitism and actual religiously ethnically motivated anti-Semitism. We have been putting this problem under Iraq, and now it is quote unquote exploding into our face. Okay, Assistant Professor of Political Science at Webster Vienna Private University, Ralph Scholhammer. Thank you for your thoughts today. Uh, really appreciate that. It will make it will make many people think.